Good morning and welcome to this beautiful estate lake in the Surrey countryside. Um, it's about half past five in the morning when I arrived, you could hear the cuckoos calling. I'm going to keep this intro quite short because we've got this horrible easterly, northeasterly wind, high pressure, bright, kind of clear skies. So I don't think we're going to be catching for that long. I think by 10 o'clock this morning it'll all be over. Um, it's a typical estate lake, lots of lilies, dam at one end. Um, predominantly a tench venue, lots of tench, sort of, I've heard they've come to over eight pound here, but generally they're sort of three to five pound. Some um, true cruising carp, a few suspect ones, and a few other species. It's all gonna be about float fishing, just using pace so we are fishing for tench on the float, going back old school really, and just enjoying a great day's fishing. I've got my mate Chris next door, and hopefully we're gonna have a few fish between us throughout the course of the morning. First cast, I had a tench. Second cast, repeat performance, another tench. So it really is all about getting here nice and early. Hitting that feeding spell. This one feels bigger. The first one was quite a small fish. This is quite slow and sluggish, actually. Really good bites on the paste float just berries and every near enough every time you strike the rod just bends right over and they really do fight hard. I'll come over into the deeper water today I normally fish the shallow bank but what with the pie pressure and everything I thought I'll come over here it might just prolong the feeding spare a little bit later into the morning this is a good fish this is my first one was a couple of pound, which is small for here. This is what fishing the state lakes is all about on the float. In amongst the lily pads. And in she goes. It's a nice fish. Hooked in the top lip exactly where it should be. And your float fishing makes a change from there you have it proper state lake tench probably three and a half pound probably getting on for four pound that one that's what it's all about told you i gave you the best swim And then after each fish, it literally is just a matter of putting in five or six bits of paste. Quite large bits, don't be scared about fishing a big lump of paste. I make my own trout pellet. And this is how I make my trout pellet. 
Right, the way I produce and make my trout pellet paste is quite simple. I use the Dynamite High Energy Marine Halibut pellets. These are four mil, you can use two mil, you can use ground bait to make your paste. But today I'm using the four mil pellets. Simply pour these into your food processor. I've actually done quite a few of these already because it is a noisy process. Uh, the longer you actually blast these for, the finer the actual powder, so the finer the paste. But you don't have to mix it really fine. Sometimes leaving a few lumps in there is better. I'm using a Ninja processor. Absolutely brilliant for making your bread, uh, liquidised bread for your chub and your roach in the winter. Also great for doing your pellets. So, yeah, I'm going to give this a blast. It is a bit noisy, but and that's why I've done some already. So as I said, the longer you do it, the finer the actual uh, powder becomes, but you grind your pellets up. These are then emptied into a bait box. I've got a kettle to the side of me, which I'm going to boil. And it's strange, we don't actually know what happens to the pellets when we actually pour boiling water on, but I've used it for years when I've been barbel fishing and it's absolutely superb. So you get your boiling water and you just cover your pellets with boiling water. You now need to leave this for, you know, a couple of hours. So it's best to prepare your pellets at home because if you do it with late water, it's gonna be a slow process. So you leave that for a couple of hours and what you'll find is it comes out into a paste like this. It's still hard in, you know, the pellets are hard in the middle, but you can mold these up. But what I do again is I get some boiling water. I just tip a little bit on this again now. And again, I leave that for a certain amount of time. You know, it doesn't take that long. You can see it's really sloppy, but all those particles will absorb the actual moisture. And then the final product, what you'll get is this ball of pellets. And you can feel different shapes and size particles in there, but generally you can take these out mold it together, goes on the hook. If it's a bit firm, a bit hard, just add a bit of lake water once you're down there. And uh, it is a brilliant way to prepare your, your paste. I like to do my own because obviously if you buy it on the shelf in containers from the tackle shop, it's got preservatives in, which obviously isn't brilliant. Um, so I just like to use my pellets straight out the packet. I mix a lot up in one go, probably a whole packet of the uh, dynamite pellets. And then what I do is I freeze those down into batches and use, you know, as and when I need those. So a simple way to making your pellet paste up, absolutely fantastic for tench. As you can see, my mate Chris is in, didn't take him long. Looks like a good fish. He's had a few little knocks to his float that look like cruising carp in his swim, but this certainly isn't a cruising carp. We went out and did a, a longish session the other day, 28 hours. I think we fished on a really hard venue for one bite, but um, we are fishing for a big double figure tench there and it uh, just didn't, didn't happen. So. I gave him the choice of going back there or coming to a slightly easier lake, smaller fish, lovely estate lake. I said in the countryside, going back to your roots, a bit of float fishing and catching some tench and there you have it. He's into his first one and that didn't take him long. There you have it, a state lake tench, not a big one. Big one, put up a, but, uh, quite a good scrap for itself. Oh, they really go in this lake, don't they? Yeah. Well done, mate. I'm sure we're going to get a few more. Okay, let's just run through the tackle I'm using. Nice and simple. 15 foot carbon active float rod. Beautiful rod, probably one of the best I've ever had. I've got a little Darwa match reel loaded with six pound brown and black magic line. The float I'm using, as you can see, 
has a big top on it, big visual top, and I'm actually just cocking it so it's quite high because when you're pace fishing, what you find is the bites are really, really positive. If I'm fishing, you know, the, um, too shallow, let's say the paste will actually sink that float. So I'm just edging it back until the paste sits on the bottom and then the float just comes up, settles at different sort of depths, but obviously the bites are just wallop. This one is a four by 16 old Avanti, probably got it free with something. Uh, free rubbers, they're just uh, attaching it to the main line. And then coming down, I've got a loop down to another loop, the hook links, Reflo 514. I've got an Olivetti, a single Olivetti, and I place that at about two thirds depth down just to cock it down to a biggish hook. This is a size 10 Browning Beast barbless. Big hook, very sharp, keeps it point, very important. When that float goes, you've got your clutch set and you just hit it really hard, set the hook, clutch does the rest. So nice and simple, big visual top, very important. Fishing about two inches over depth, very important to plumb it up your depth. Just uh, you know, a couple of feet off the rod tip I'm fishing. And then, um, yeah, just uh, keep feeding, little bits of pellet, paste all the time, six bits, just kind of work, get a bite. If you miss it, put another six in catch a fish, put another six in. You can fish different sides if you want, but I'm only here for a morning, so today I've just been fishing straight out in front of me. So nice and simple on the estate lakes. In fact, all float fishing is really simple and uh, what an enjoyable way to spend the day catching, you know, decent tench on the float, just like we did when we were young. Yeah, it um, really should do more of this. This fishing is quite incredible. We've only been fishing a few minutes. This is the fourth one I've hooked. They fight like hell. We got lilies here, there, and everywhere, and this one's making a beeline for them. Gotta make sure your clutch is set quite hard, but blimey. That was straight in. All I do is I just work on the principle of get a bite land a fish. Put a few bits of pellet in. And then uh, pop it in there and it doesn't take long before the float goes. Chris's swim hasn't really come alive yet. It's a little bit shallower. Can't believe how cold it is. We've still got this northeast wind. We're on the cold bank as well, which is, um, but we've come here because it's deeper water. Great way to fish. Really powerful fish these are. This real clutch is a little bit all or nothing. Really, really healthy fit fish these are. Almost embarrassing when you land one because they're not that big and you think this has got to be six, seven pound, but they're not. They're sort of like three to five pound with the chance of a bigger fish. But it brings back all those childhood memories and uh, of watching that float against the lily pads. I'm not actually fishing against the lilies because these fish fight so hard. I picked a swim away from them but it is literally a fish, a tench every cast.
This is tench number eight. Um, it's quite strange, the lake's just died. It's not even eight o'clock now, so I've only been fishing probably well, less than two hours. Um, and, and earlier it was absolutely amazing how I could just put it straight down and the float would sail away and the fish would come up. And then all of a sudden, Chris's swim just hasn't come alive. The guy opposite stopped catching. And I just had a bite after about a 15 minute sort of lull, struck, bumped the fish and then managed to get another bite. So I've put a, the last four and I'll probably this one in the net. So I'll just show you these after a while, put a bit of bait in and hopefully they come back. But I had a funny feeling with this high pressure, horrible northeast wind that it really would die. And when it dies, you can, you know, you can do everything possible but you just won't buy a bite. So um, it's died a lot quicker than I expected it to. But as I say, this is that tench number eight, and I've, you know, two hours, but I reckon in the next two hours, I'll be lucky, only a little one, lucky if I catch a couple of fish in the next two hours, but we will keep going and give it a go. Lovely. So there you have it. Five lovely estate lake tench. They're not the biggest. They never are in the estate lakes. Biggest one there is probably getting on for, I don't know, four pound that one maybe, three and a half pound. I had three earlier before I got a keep net out, but I just wanted to get the keep net out, put a few in. Started fishing probably about six. It's just after eight now. I've had 12 bites, one crayfish, one bunt fish. I've just lost what? was either a very big tench or a road carp. And uh, yeah, eight tench, lovely. What you can expect from a, an estate lake. No alarms down here, just uh, float fishing using pellet paste. And you can have some absolutely fantastic sport. I say the uh, window of opportunity, get down there nice and early because once that sun gets up, and as I say, we've got some high pressure northeast wind. The whole country's not been fishing very well. It's uh, about the 20th of May. I'm wrapped up, I'm freezing cold. But as you can see, come down nice and early in the morning, get the float rod out, you can't beat it. Just going back to the days when I was a youngster, uh, fishing, I fished this lake when I was oh, probably late teens and it's nice to come back and catch a few and see how good it's doing. Didn't think it felt like a tench. We're into what we call one of these big brown gold fish. Been getting some bites and missing them. And uh, struck into a fish and thought, ooh, not right that isn't. Look at that, <laughs> you want to see this. Hooked in the bottom lip, which kind of blind in one eye. <laughs> Strange looking fish. Proper old fish. That's a brown goldfish. That's not a cruising. <laughs> no way. Some people might be fooled, but. No, it's obvious to me. It should be obvious to everybody. If you want to get the best out of a day's float fishing, then you need to get yourself a plummet. You just cannot go float fishing without a plummet. You need to know what sort of depth of water you've got in front of you. And what you simply do is just put the hook through the eye into the cork and then 
swing out, I'm fishing just off the rod tip. So I'm standing up, stretching my arm out and just feeling the plummet down, hitting the bottom. And then just give the time for that float just to set, come up, and then you can just fine adjust that just so you're a couple of inches on the bottom. So take your time, very, very important. You can't just get to a swim and think, oh, that's about four foot, or say to your mate in the next swim, oh, is it about that? Because you, you, just, you just can't do that. Make sure you get a plummet, big heavy one, especially when you're fishing off the rod tip, just lower it down, you'll feel it hit bottom, you'll see where the float is, and then just adjust that. So you've got about two or three inches showing of the tip of the float, because obviously you, when pace fishing, you just want to be resting on the bottom. Another thing that you need to really, really pay attention to is feeding. Don't go sitting there putting loads and loads of ground bait out, loads of pellet, trying to fish at every fish and tench in the lake. What I do is I just pull, pull off about six little bits of this, what I'm using on the hook, different sizes, and then literally I'm just putting that out around the float every time I get a bite, every time I miss a bite, or if it goes a little bit quiet, just a few, other, a few more bits. So keep that feeding going in little and often instead of putting loads in at the start. Just try and get into a routine. This pellet comes off your hook quite quickly. So sometimes you just gotta lift up. You can actually feel if your pellet paste is still on the hook, sometimes it's not. And just every time you go in there, just add you know, a few bits of pellet around where you float fishing and that will kind of you know catch you one fish at a time and then you can just build that that swim accordingly well after those eight ten early on it went a little bit quiet for 15 20 minutes I lost what I think was a carp and then all of a sudden I'm back there and uh, I think I'm up to number 14 now all I do is just uh, just drop it down there let the actual float settle and it doesn't take long for the float to go. There we go. Beautiful state lake tench. They're not the biggest, but I tell you, they're angry here. They done our pull back. Brilliant fun on the float gear. Chris has now moved to the other side of me and I've had a couple. He was just not getting them in that other swim for some reason. Quite a few people have turned up now. A lot of hikers and cyclists around. It is a weekend, it is a Sunday. And there we have it, beautiful tench on the float, fishing pellet paste, doesn't get much better. Well, I think I'll make this uh, my last fish. I'm lost count how many I've caught now. It's got to be getting on for 30 at eight this morning and then it went quiet. And I thought that was it, but I've just constantly fed, as you saw there, every time six, eight bits of paste. I was actually feeding them when the float went and the fish have just been coming nice and steady. They've all been tense apart from one brown goldfish. Chris has changed swims, he's had a dozen now. Um, it's a nice little tip there. If you're sitting next to somebody catching in slightly deeper water, then uh, don't be scared to get up and move. He did and straight away he started catching. In fact, he's probably catching more than I am at the moment. No big fish today. Um, as you say, that's a small one, up to about four pound. Uh, what a fantastic day's fishing, or should I say morning, because it's only half past 11, the sun's up. Quite a few people out here now. And um, yeah, packing up before lunchtime with, I don't know, 50 pound of tench landed. What a lovely place. If you've got an estate lake near you, get down there, get on the float mix and paste up and give it a go. Absolutely enjoyable fishing at its finest.
Lovely couple of fish from the estate lake. Float fish, keep it nice and simple. Just feed little and often. Paste on the float. Long rod, you cannot, cannot beat it. What a cracking day.